In the first ever Ark Survival Ascended experiment, 100 players were stranded on a single island and separated between three teams, each on the opposite side of the island. We have the North, the Southeast, and the Southwest. The players would have to hunt for food, gather resources, tame dinosaurs, elect a leader, and forge their civilization in hopes of surviving any oncoming wars. The players were given complete freedom with no instructions or help, and just like real life, when a player dies in this event, they will stay dead forever. This event was by far the best one I've ever done, so grab some food, sit back, and relax, because you are about to watch the first ever 100 players civilization experiment in Ark Survival Ascended. And so, the players had spawned, 33 people on each side of the map. Immediately, people started looking for others in the area to group up. Wait, jump, fat freak on the beach, jump. Many of these players started farming for resources so they could be better prepared to survive the dangers when traveling this island. Let's go guys, for the win, north one. Those on the north were able to meet up at a nearby lake. They had set up a small wooden shack where they could gather their members and fight off the cold. The north was by far the most dangerous spawn, so one player chose to do a little speech. Every other tribe, look, all of them, they're just villagers in a tribe. But us, we're warriors. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. yeah! The team that spawned on the southeast had been busy shipping members from the mainland. Away from me! <laughs> These members were being shipped to a nearby island called Herbivore Island. As you can tell by the name, there was in fact only herbivores. This made the area a great spot to set up base, and it was also filled to the brim with rich resources, making it really easy to set up. Two builders named Logan and Safaro began building some bases dotted around the island. We need to get some fortifications up and going, and then we need to get everyone in armor as soon as possible, like at least chitin. Now we head over to our very last civilization, the Southwest. These guys had already established a name, and they had called themselves the Byzantine Guperium. One player named Fat Albert was grouping everyone up. Alright guys, the coordinates for the base are latitude 82.7, longitude 25.8. Everyone get that? Yes sir. Why is everyone referring to Fat Albert sir? Well, he's actually the monarch dictator of this tribe, and he had done that by gathering a group of henchmen and forcing his leadership upon them. Anyway, going back over to the North Tribe, all was very peaceful and they had decided to set up a pole for their base location. Can we yeah, let's yeah, let's do a vote. So Snow Mountain, Eastern Mountain and Karno. And the poll results were out. 41% Karno Island, 33 Snow Mountain and 25 East Mountain. It was decided they would go over to the Karno Island. However, for now, only one player went over to Karno Island because it was very dangerous. It's short for Carnivore Island. And so this player got a little head start on some defense dinos for the rest of the team. Back over at the civilization on the southeast, everything was going perfectly well. They didn't have to worry about any defense dinos in the slightest. Right, so what we'll do, we'll get main base set up on top, run like gates or summit down below, have that as like a little tame area with, I don't know, greenhouse and shit. I feel good about this, we got a, uh, a good location. On this southeast team, there were two main builders, Logan and Safaria. Logan planned on building the base itself, and Safaria was completely aimed on defenses like surrounding the island with gates. But now we take a look at the Byzantine Guperium. These guys had been working very, very hard, and under Fat Albert's rule, they had been building really effectively. But I soon found out the word Byzantine did not come out of nowhere. Albert had been very intelligent with his game plans, and I wanted to do an interview with him. Hey Albert, how you doing? I'm doing good. So what's your, what's your game plan? Well, if you look at the area we're building, this looks exactly like Constantinople. Constantinople was a city that held out against impossible odds, against an infinite number of sieges, and we're hoping to rebuild some of that glory today. If you've never heard of the Byzantines, I do suggest searching it up. I found this really interesting that a genuine team was basing what they're doing off of a real place. But Fat Albert had something he had to tell you. It was on his mind, and it was very, very important. Listen up, everyone. I want you guys right now to go in the description and download War Thunder. No exceptions. Because if you like Ark, you are going to love War Thunder. It's the most detailed vehicle combat game ever made. With 4K resolution and the most insane collection of over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, you will find yourself glued to the screen. Now, I love War Thunder not just for the vehicles, but for the mental customization system. You can apply hundreds of camouflages, historical markings, and even 3D decorators like bushes and equipment. 
Plus, I have to mention the insane detailed vehicle damage models. No more generic hit points. Your vehicles will suffer actual damage to their components and crew. You'll even get a damage x-ray that shows exactly what's happening. Trust me, King Albert does not lie. This x-ray adds a whole new level of realism to the game. Play for free on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and claim your huge bonus pack that's waiting for all new players, plus those returning after six months. Go into the description right now and download War Thunder today. After Albert had finished his little talk, we go over to the North Civilization. These guys were getting ready to go travel on boats to Carnival Island, and they had tamed a few dinos, so they were going to have to pack them on the boats. Let's move out both the rafts, let's go. I'm having oh, a shit. blast with this, this is so much fucking fun. As they moved out, I'm going to let you take a look at the amazing Ark Survival Ascender graphics. These guys had secured Kano Island, they had killed all the dangerous tames in the area, and they now had a small metal smelting base that they set up. Their main focus was to go out in their high level tame area and try and get as many good rexes and UTs as possible. I'm making more refining forges still. I got three more forges down. Okay, good, good. good. Back over near the southeast, Safario had started building a watchtower. This watchtower would be incredibly useful. By using this, they could see any enemies on the way and they could shout for the rest of their team. Logan was in charge of building the main base as he had massive plans for constructing a castle. Who, who's the who's the main builder though? Is that Logan or someone else? Yeah. I'll take control of That's a lot of stone. As Logan was building this mighty base, members of the Byzantine Guperium were working very, very hard. A lot of the members also wanted Albert to do a speech, and this was his response. No. Yeah, Albert, come on, yeah, you need yeah, to do a speech. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. a speech no Albert, please do a speech. Oh, bro. No, get, get out of here, guys. Please, get please, come on, don't be shy. No. Dude, what? I'm yeah. already a leader, there's no need for a speech. It seems Albert loves doing War Thunder sponsors, but hates doing speeches for his tribe. Now, I'm going to show you what a proper speech looks like. We're going to the North Civilization, and these guys had the perfect election. It was the pinnacle of any elections I've ever seen. Get ready for the hamburger. Yeah, let, let nothing speak except his actions. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! Yeah. Woo! I, I, I like this guy. And so the North Tribe were now under theocracy. Being led by Hamburger Man, they were calling themselves the Hamburgians. This was a great tribe. Now we take a look at the Southeast Civilization, where Logan and Safario had been doing very, very well. I'll give you a short bit of time just to take a look at the design of this base and how amazing the ASA graphics are. These guys had also decided to host their own election. They chose more of a democratic approach and there were two candidates, Logan and Karma. Logan being the builder as you know, and Karma being a man of the people. Logan was the first up for his speech. Good evening lads. Look. Look at what we've got. Look at what we've accomplished together as a team, as a tribe, as a fucking family, lads. We can do this. We can win. We have got this. I love you, Logan. Yeah. Let's go. Logan. After that amazing speech, we now move on to Karma, Logan's opposition. Now for the other hey, side. Hey, Some of you know me. My name is Karmavor. You guys have seen me work alongside of you, helped organize the construction of the base, make sure that things were happening in the right order. I built that beautiful battleship we see down there, the SS Hyperion, pride of our empire. I can promise you, we'll play it smart. I will elect a minister of construction. The proud Logan here has done an outstanding job building this castle. I'll appoint Dero, my minister of war. I'll finally elect a supreme tamer to be in charge of the, uh, the dinos. With this policy, I think we can go forward and be successful to take this game. My name is Carnivore. Yeah, Carnivore! Let's yeah. 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 fucking go! After both amazing speeches, it was time for the votes to be counted in. Each player would stand behind their leader. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got eight. Carnivore wins. Uh, Woo! Yeah. Let's go! Well done, Carla. GG's last game. Yeah. Yeah. Now Karma was elected, they wanted to call themselves the Atlanteans, and they would control the waters of the bottom left. 
going over to the Byzantine Guperium. Albert was making sure their base was looking good. Flags are going up. I have to see this glorious moment, oh my lord. Byzantine's plan was pretty much to sit inside their base and defend with snipers. They had also constructed a second base, meaning that when enemies came over, they wouldn't even know who to attack. The Byzantine had also constructed sniper towers for higher positions to shoot from. They had also made ocean walls, meaning that anyone that came to attack on rafts, which was the one weak point, is now blocked. Over at the Atlanteans, Karma had organised for four members and himself to go out to a cave on the mainland. Inside this cave there were bats and they could get cementing paste by killing those. Karma and his men were also talking about maybe attacking Guperium. Yeah, you know, let's let's have a, a plan at least if if we do want to launch an attack like early on before they're expecting it. What team do we attack though? The uh, we should attack we the know uh, South bottom face, left right? one, the red yeah. ob team. We should go after them. They're gonna have worse teams, I'd assume. First thing to do will be to conduct reconnaissance and check them out before you just go and attack. Yeah, we'll recon first before we do anything. And that was the plan. Karma was going to stay at base with most of the tribe, while just a few members went out and did a small recon mission. The Atlanteans in the cave were now leaving with a lot of resources. Unfortunately, they did lose two members. Now we move over to the Hamburgian civilization. Their base was looking reasonably good, they had gates all around, they had spikes up and they had some sniper towers. But I knew that these guys' main objective was to focus on the offensive and try to get as many Rexes and UTs as possible. Over at Byzantine Guperium, there was a scout lurking in the bushes. This scout was indeed one of the members from the Atlanteans, and Karma had sent him over here to try and gather as much information as possible. Guys, compared to our base, their base is like four, four times as large. 86, 29. Nah, what? What? what did you say? Some little freak was There's camping, bro. When Byzantine realized there was a scout at their base, it was the number one priority to kill them. Uh, oh, right this here. thing is so weak. It's like right around here. The Atlantean member began running to the trees as he was starting to get low and his flak was failing him. Don't lose him, don't lose him, don't lose him. Dude, no shot. Right here, right here on, on me. You see the green? Yeah. We can get this guy. Yeah, I'm dead, bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I got him. I got him. Oh, let's go. After the Byzantine Goopers had killed this Atlantean, they were now on high alert, and they had people manning the walls and the towers. The leader of the Atlanteans, Karma, had also been making some plans. He'd order three of his best PvPers to gather up their Xenosaurs and head out on the SS Hyperion. They were going to Byzantine's base and their plan was to go around the back of the base, so Byzantine had no idea they were coming. Soon, the three PvPers docked at the back of Byzantine's base, and all they had to do now was hop in their Therizinos and run over to the rear entrance of Byzantine. Now we know that the Byzantine Guperium does not have any high tames like Rexes or UTs or anything like that, so they would really need to use the base to their advantage. As long as they stayed inside the base, they should be okay. Yeah, come to me, guys. I'm I'm we got two enemy Thezzies by themselves. No. They're on me. Get every, everyone that can get out to me right now. I'm trying. I'm, I'm coming. Fat Albert himself was out farming on a cat pro, and he was now getting jumped by Therries. Albert was running back to the base, calling for as much help as possible and hoping his tribe could get to him in time. Fuck, I'm gonna die. That's no. so ass. No. There's so many. Oh, shit. There's no, like no, six no, 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 of them. No. We got one, we got one, baby! And that was the end of Fat Albert's reign. Okay, okay guys, I'm, I'm logging out. Oh, now man. Uh, Robert, you need to do leader. Good luck, yeah, Robert. What? Uh, good, yeah, good Sorry. luck, thank you. The Atlanteans started rushing towards Byzantine as their hopes were now high. They had just killed the leader. Fall back, fall back, fall back. Guperian forces were ordering everyone to fall back as they were getting fully raided. Oh yeah, they're, they're attacking, they're attacking, they're attacking. The few people on the front lines had baryonyxes and frogs which stood no chance against Therese. However, back at the wall of the base, they had racers. These racers were rushing for the Therizinosaurs and they could tank some damage, but they could not do the damage themselves. Oh, they got people up on the up on the defenses. Oh, yeah, they're weighing in me. Let's back off a little bit. Oh, yeah, my Therese's about to die. These racers had managed to hold up long enough for Guperians to bring Therizinosaurs out of their base and finally push the Atlantics back. Oh yeah, Therion on me, Therion on me, Therion on me. Yeah, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm full dead, I'm dead. No! <laughs> this was the second member that the Byzantine had managed to kill from the Atlanteans' attacks. The Byzantine now began going back to their base to sit back on their outposts, and they were getting ready for yet another raid. 
because they felt Atlantean would be coming. But it was not Atlantean that the Byzantine needed to worry about, for the Hamburgians were on the way. Unfortunately, Hamburger Man did die on the way, I have no idea how honestly, but write rip in the comments for him. Anyway, over at the Byzantines base, members began getting sniped and they had no idea who from. Now, you might be asking, how did the Hamburgians know when to leave the base and how did they know where Byzantine was? Was it a coincidence? Or was there a man named Champa sitting in Gilly outside Byzantine? It was indeed the latter, and Champa had been giving out communications for the last hour. The Hamburgians also had another scout over at Atlantean's base. However, it was harder to give communications because Atlanteans had such a big distance. Someone wants to rotate it out and someone just hop up in the watchtower for a minute. Now, both tribes knew they were being watched, but they also knew nothing can happen. It was a one versus an army. Now, Byzantine had full understanding that this was seriously just a guy in Gilly. There was no raid coming on. So what they did is they got their rifles and they just began shooting the grass, trying to scare the sniper. Eventually, Champa moved a tiny bit. And this meant the Byzantines knew where he was. There's also, yeah, we also need someone on the UD and someone Guys, on the man. I need help, I need help, whoever's here, I need help. Oh, help shit. me! They oh, found you! Alright, we're leaving, Help let's go. Me. The second the Byzantines knew where Champa was, they whistled a raptor on him to get him stuck, and then a player on a Therizinosaur came out. At this point, Champa was running for his life, screaming to his tribe to come and save him. I'm dead, I'm dead! Yeah, this one, Cardboard. Oh. No, we lost Champers. From this point in time, every single person that stepped in the way of Byzantine was slaughtered. The Hamburgians were not gonna have it. They arrived with Rexes. Oh, uh, uh, north, north, north. The, uh, the north tribe is attacking us. Oh, there's so many Rexes. Holy shit! Get in base. Get, grab, grab oh, Therish. So grab Therish. Fall, fall, fall back, fall back, fall back, fall back. Guperian forces instantly fell back as there were so many Rexes. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Let's get in, get in, get in, get in. This is bad, this is bad. Oh, shit. They were struggling to get in their own gate and Hamburgians were completely surrounding the castle. These Hamburgians had a UT and that was boosting all of their Rexes in damage. It was not long before the Hamburgians began throwing grenades, and they managed to break the gate of the Byzantine's wall. The members of the Byzantine got their few Rexes, their few Therese, and their Mammoth, and tried defending for their lives. They just needed to hold that door before they could get it repaired. On the one oh, they're getting through. Get oh, are they? oh, crap. Unfortunately for Byzantine, the Hamburgians were rushing in the base. They had breached this door, and they had too many Rexes to count. The Byzantine members began surfacing the wall with grapples, and soon behind them were Hamburgian members. These Hamburgians were up on the walls, and Byzantine was not going to let them stay. This wall was their main defense point, and if they lost this, they would be absolutely done for. Okay, the gun wall jumped out. I'm dead. I'm dead, I'm dead. The Byzantine forces had managed to secure the wall. However, their leader, Robert, or RBZ, had died. This now meant the Byzantine Guperians were in anarchy. They had no leader, no one to get commands from, and with no commands comes no organization. The Hamburgians began charging into the base. He's coming He's in. Getting in. There was absolutely nothing Byzantine could do to defend from this attack. All they could do is sit on the walls and continue sniping. But surprisingly, their hopes were high. Oh guys, see, it's still fine. We're alive. It doesn't matter if they take our base. Yeah, they uh, can't really look, get it. Their main objective for now was just to defend this wall with their lives. They actually did manage to kill a few of the Hamburgians by sniping with their incredibly good aim. But the Hamburgians were in no way ready to retreat. They had hundreds upon hundreds of grenades, and there's no way they're turning around. Unless, of course, there was a third party team, the Atlanteans. They had made their way over, hoping for revenge. It was now a race between the Hamburgians breaking into Byzantine's base or the Atlanteans arriving and third party killing them. While the Hamburgians were blowing up Byzantine's base, they had no idea that the Atlanteans were outside and getting ready to attack. But soon, they were given the hint by Byzantine themselves. Byzantine had been using long necks. Just the, the, the East tribe's here, East tribe's here. Oh, sh guys, maybe we should just hide. They're all I'm all, I've almost run out of ammo. Yeah, they're, they're leaving. Leave. Yeah, they're, they're all leaving. They're all, they all left. One of the Hamburgian members realized that Byzantine wasn't shooting them. They were shooting someone else, and when they went to look, it was Atlanteans. Goopers, just stay strong. Goopers, stay strong. The Hamburgians had left in fear of getting third party by Atlanteans. However, the Byzantine Guperian members were stuck. They were completely trapped inside one single tower and there was only three of them remaining. The Atlanteans began surrounding the floor of the tower and they planned to grapple up, but the Guperians had a plan. Yeah, okay, no, we're all good in here in the tower. Okay, there's a sniper, by the way. He stopped me up there, so I'm kind of low. 
they decided they're going to send one of their members out of the tower to try and make a run for the base. If he could get inside, he could maybe grab some tames. If he managed to grab even one tame, it could cause a big enough distraction for the others to escape. It seemed the time had come for this Guperian to leave. He began parachuting down, hoping to get past this theory, but snipers were dotted round and the Atlanteans had finished him off. There was now only two Guperians left. Now, because of the hole that guy had made up in the tower, one of the Atlantean members was able to surface with grapples and get inside. He was now approaching a Guperian who is completely oblivious to their entrance. Kill them. This meant there was only one Byzantine Guperian left, and his name was Panada. He had just managed to place two stone ceilings, making it look like that was the bottom of the tower. This meant the Atlantean had no idea Palander was even there. Because of this, the Atlantean leader, Karma, just decided that they must all be dead. So they hopped in the raft and headed back to Atlantis. This meant that Palander had survived. One single Byzantine Guperium was alive. Somehow, Palander had managed to sneak his way past the entire of the Atlanteans. Also, I want to point out, look at the damage on that gate. One more grenade from Hamburgians and this base would be broken into. Palander had decided. He needed to honour Fat Albert, Robert and the rest of his men. His aim from now was to go to Atlantis and defeat them. So Palander used the resources left in the Byzantines base and began getting armoured up for a final fight. Now, because Palander played so well, I asked for him to go to the front of the base and do a little speech for you guys. I am the last defender of the Byzantine Empire. I have watched the death of all my friends, watched all our tames die. The Byzantine Empire and Sweden is calling for this victory. I shall do my duty to the very end. I, Palander, shall fight for Sweden and the Byzantines. I did not did like Palander? that. I didn't like the amount of Sweden talk. Hip hip hooray! It was now time for the final fight, the final stand, the final decider of who is victorious. Would it be the army of the Atlanteans? Would it be the army of the Hamburgians? Or would it be Palander? The Atlanteans stayed put on their legendary castle and expected a Hamburgian boat to arrive. Yeah, they've probably got some serious teams. Well, considering they're top right. Yeah, yeah they've, they've, Corno, so. they've Corno Island, they have all that, so. The Hamburgians had arrived. With one Rex boat, two grenade boats, it would be a very interesting fight. Okay, blow the, blow the wall, blow the wall, they know. Get, get a few walls blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These Hamburgians had grenades on top of grenades. They were arming their Rexes, getting ready to charge. And so, the gates went down. Their strategy was to run as fast as possible and try and bombard the Atlantic forces. It would be a tough fight. Atlanteans had strong positions and they were getting ready to shoot their long necks. Hamburgians continued throwing grenade after grenade, trying to take down the main gates. But it's not easy to throw grenades when you're getting sniped by Atlantic members. Finally, the first gate was down and soon came the second. Now, how were the Hamburgians so coordinated in their attack? They had a shadow leader named Serpent who was an experienced PvPer and he ordered again for them to charge in on Rexes through the night. Hey, they're gonna the front door. Mm. They're, gonna they're gonna blast through our front door, guys. The front door was being blown to bits, and it would not be long before these Hamburgians were entering the Atlantean base. Once that main gate was blown, they went straight in with their Rexes. Hamburgians going left and right, trying to throw grenades if they could. The Atlanteans got in their sniper positions and tried picking anyone that was on foot. The entire base was getting bombarded by grenades from the Hamburgians, and the Atlanteans had to head to the top of the castle because they were getting grenades thrown on them. Careful, they're throwing grenades up top. Don't let them hit you. Because the Atlanteans had to retreat to a higher floor in the castle, this gave the Hamburgians a chance to run in. When the Hamburgians finally breached the base, it was time to blow everything to bits. The whole of the Atlantean tribe was getting stuck in a stairwell. Hey, those, uh, nomad, nomad, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Eaten through the walls. Run, 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 run. Their last option was to go to the very top floor of the castle, where they could be easily sniped or even grappled upon. Both teams were losing members left and right. There were dead bodies absolutely everywhere.
With few members left from each empire, it was really the last fight. Atlanteans stayed put on their mighty castle, while Hamburgians began grappling up. Get their asses, guys! The second they managed to get up, a player named Rape had managed to kill one of the Atlanteans, and now Serpent had killed the other. Yeah, no problem, no problem, go, go, go. I beamed this guy, I beamed him. I've been killed. Come down, come down, come down, come down. You've killed him. Oh, you're oh dude, dude, what the hell? We didn't even get the clutch. There was now only one Atlantean member remaining. This was the woman with the beard, and his name was Honk. Four, five, you guys, six. You guys, gotta miss it out. Get up there. Yeah, I we're, broke, we're his up legs, broke his legs. Broke his legs. After Wraith broke his legs, he tried putting more back on, but he couldn't. Bro, he just stood there for a one, one, one. Honk yeah. completely stressed oh out God, and ended no up way. running off the castle. Oh, oh, I don't oh. twice. This guy was running for his life. If Honk could find a way out of here, that would be one of the best plays in history. He's going to the stupid crocodile. I don't oh, he's running so much. Oh, he opened the gate and managed to find a raft to escape on. Yeah. He's on a raft. That He's taking a raft out of here. Honk genuinely managed to escape this base. And by the way, if you don't hear him talking, it's because this guy was completely silent the entire time. He was fixated on PvPing his absolute best. Honk ended up retreating on this boat, but that was only so he could put on his second pair of black armor. He would soon be back. And it had seemed Palander had arrived at the Atlantean base. Palander began shooting the Hamburgians, which caused them to storm down. Palander was outnumbered, and he was in a really bad area for cover. He needed to run backwards and get into a covered area to stay safe. Palander began running for his life, getting shot in his back by these Hamburgians, and he was just hoping his armor would stay strong. Palander was running, drinking medbrews for his life. He needed to find cover. The Hamburgians managed to break Palander's chest piece. He managed to just find the cover to put on his spare chest piece and get back in the fight. At this point, it was a 1v1. The other player from the Hamburgians was really far behind. Now, Palander had ran out of simple pistol ammo, but he still had a long neck. If he could make that shot count, he could still win. And that was the end of the Byzantine Empire. Palander had fought valiantly. Now, there was only three people left, Wraith and Serpent with the Hamburgians and Honk with the Atlanteans. Drop a comment below saying either Hamburgians for Wraith and Serpent or Atlanteans for Honk. I'll be looking on who predicts the winner of this fight. It was time for the very last stand, a 2v1. Honk began grappling up to Safario's tower. Honk was trying to get the best sniper position possible as he had insanely good aim. However, in the meanwhile, the two Hamburgians, Wraith and Serpent, had seen him grappling up. It was now a sniper standoff, but Wraith and Serpent had a plan. Wraith was going to distract him by staying on the rock sniping him, and Serpent was going to go around the back with grenades. Serpent had arrived, and he began whipping out his grenades to take down Honk once and for all. Now, something unfortunate happened. There was a glitch, and the grenades being thrown at this gate didn't do any damage at all. However, Wraith had been typing in global chat informing Honk of the situation, and Honk decided to do something that you barely ever see. Honk was making his way down the stairs to do a final 2v1 melee fight. Absolute respect to Honk for this amazing move. Now Wraith was still really far away, so currently it was just Honk versus Serpent. We're going fishing tonight, boys! Honk was doing loads and loads of damage to Serpent, and Serpent was getting really low, but Wraith soon came in. This meant it was now 2v1. Honk focused on one at a time to try and kill them individually. <laughs> his boots are gone! Serpent and Wraith managed to break Honk's boots, and this clearly indicated his armor was getting low. And that was the end of Honk. Let's go! Finally. Yes, let's go! Well done! Yeah. Let's go! This means the Hamburgians had secured the victory. Wraith and Serpent fought incredibly well. And now, it was time for them to give their final speech. Alright, this is Serpent, and I got Wraith with me over here with the hard perseverance and lots yeah. of casualties. Here we are, the uh, enemy's body on the ground, and we still stand. I would like to give a massive thanks to everyone that participated in this event. It was absolutely amazing. Also, if you do want to play in these events yourself, it's completely crossplay. I host these events about once a month, and if you participate, you can genuinely appear in the video. Also, I have to mention my long-term ARC server. This ARC server is absolutely amazing. We have 10x rates, high taming speed, and it's a six-man tribe limit. I play on the server myself with a few friends, and it's great. Come on, join the Discord in the description. A quick reminder, do not miss out on War Thunder. 
Fat Albert did not die for nothing. This game offers all play styles from fast paced action to realist or tactical fights. You can get your huge bonus pack with premium vehicles and perks. Play for now for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox and thank you again War Thunder for sponsoring this video.